say Libra was something of a uh, lit a bit of a fire. We, this is something we've been focused on digital currencies for you know a couple decades. Digital currencies for you know a couple decades. We, this is something we've been focused on digital currencies for you know a couple decades. Point about this break between the U.S. and China and said, you know, both sides are going to say, whose team are you on? Mm -hmm. And he said, our job is to make sure the question never arises. But the question has arisen. And so I think we have to go deeper. And it's not about the U.S. versus China. It's about what underpins a world order is always the financial system. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very privileged. My father was an advisor to Nixon when they came off the gold standard in 71. And so I was brought up with a kind of inside view of how very important the financial structure is to absolutely everything else. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think, is we are on the brink of a dramatic change where we are about to, and I'll say this boldly, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. And the new one, the new accounting, is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having a almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy, mm -hmm. which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. In my opinion, we're going to need a digital constitution of human rights if we're going to have digital money. Uh, but also, this new money will be sovereign in nature. Most people think that digital money is crypto and private. But what I see are superpowers introducing digital currency. The Chinese were the first. The US is on the brink, I think, of moving in the same direction. The Europeans have committed to that as well. And the question is, will that new system of digital money and digital accounting accommodate the competing needs of the citizens of all these locations so that every human being has a chance to have a better life? Because that's the only measure of whether our world order really serves. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And guys, we know crypto is global. We are now on the world stage. And like I wrote in my New World Order book, Bitcoin gives the New World Order the all CNI. Where they're able to see every transaction, and they'll be able to control every transaction tell you what, where, and when, and how to buy it. No more savings. That's the reason why they're going to dangle that carrot with that free money. And we know universal basic income is right around the corner. Where they're going to airdrop that money. You're going to have three to six months to spend it or poof, it's gone. And that's from David from R3, who clearly states he works with the central banks all the time. And like she stated, a new road order starts with the economy. That's the reason why the Fed was so important. They created money out of thin air to buy up the globe. If somebody told you that this was going to work, you wouldn't believe it. But as long as you keep the sheep distracted on things that don't matter and use the Hegelian dialectic, so therefore they're fighting each other while you're running the money in the back door. It has worked for centuries. Guys, this is biblical. The Bible shows you how to create a new world order. It shows you the good, but it also it shows you the evil. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Yeah, the answer is definitely yes. Um, when you look at Bitcoin and Ethereum in particular, uh, it's pretty clear to me that those are commodities. And uh, the spot market will end up at CFTC and futures markets, which is why it's so fabulous to work on this with Senator Gillibrand, because she's on the Ag Committee that has jurisdiction over the CFTC. Uh, but the previous speaker you heard said there are something like 17,000 uh, cryptos. Uh, and certainly not all of those are um, commodities. Um, so we'll still be using the old Howey test from the 1940s to help define what is a security and what is a commodity. And the SEC will also have a huge role uh, in this uh, space. Additionally, uh, when you look at um, stable coins, payment stable coins, and a possible uh, CFDC, the um, 
uh, central bank digital currency, uh, those are going to be addressed in this bill also to a smaller measure. So, for example, if we had a central bank digital currency, uh, it would likely not be like the digital yuan, which is more a direct to the retail customer type of uh, asset. Um, ours would be function more like the current Fed, where our uh, central bank digital currency would allow for faster uh, and cheaper uh, transfers of money among central banks, both internationally and within the United States, and the Bank for International Settlement and so forth. And then it would be the banks that would be the issuers uh, of stable coins. Uh, and they would be pegged to the dollar uh, as opposed to the digital yuan, uh, which is a direct to retail product. So uh, these are some of the things that we're kicking around in this bill. We're going to a different economy and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.